Hello, good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? <clears throat> yes, I can hear you. Hi, so far I can see Jay, Amit, Aniket, Bhaskar, Jasmine, Shana, Pratham, Shailaja, Shifali. We a couple of others on the phone. All right. So okay, everybody can hear me. There's still people joining. We'll just get started in a minute. All right, we have the full house, let's get started. I want to share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes. All right, perfect. So if you have any questions during the uh, webinar, feel free to ask questions, I'll pause between the slides. You can either unmute yourself at the time when I pause and ask the question, or you can use the chat box. Let me use the chat, keep the chat on. So, uh, if you would like to get a copy of this presentation uh, after the webinar and a link to the webinar, uh, please uh, provide your email address and your child's grade and name in the chat. So there are two ways to chat. When you go to the chat, uh, by default, it says to everyone. You can either send there or uh, if there is any question, right? Send, send it to everyone. But if you have only, uh, if you are giving your email or uh, uh, your child's details, uh, you can just use the private chat and uh, select Maths Academy. Or I think either it says either Maths Academy, yeah. So just use, I'm Ram, by the way. I'll introduce myself, but uh, you can select Maths Academy and uh, give you details there. Please also give your child's grade. That way I know which grade uh, kids, uh, kids' parents are here so I can you know, customize accordingly. So if each of you can go ahead and uh, enter in the chat as you get started. Uh, that would be great. So uh, each of you, if you don't mind, um, so, so, so. 
which grade kids are uh, i know all of you are i'm sure your parents by the way if any kids are here uh, please do call your parent because this session is mainly meant for the parents uh, all the kids high school kids are welcome to stay as well uh, but you no know, you may get bored so it's more meant for the parents Uh, my name is Ram uh, Ram Yeleti. Uh, I'm the founder of Maths Academy. Uh, my passion is uh, uh, education field here in the US. Uh, I came here just like I did my college in India. Uh, I came here very a few like for a job, and uh, I found that there's a there's a lot of information out here, uh, but sometimes there's too much. It's it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so I did a lot of research myself, uh, and uh, um, the, the goal of these webinars is to provide uh, the information in a context, right? Because this, if you Google for it, you will get millions of pages on any of these, and that's too overwhelming. So giving a context around it, what is important, and things keep changing. Right, SAT, for example, College Board has dropped off essay recently, dropped off subject tests. And there are changes happen every year. There's so much information out there. So my goal here is to provide a curated information uh, and answer questions so that, uh, you know, especially if you have the first kid in high school or going to high school soon, um, you know, we'll all be anxious on uh, how do we provide the right platform for them. So that's really, goal of this webinar is to provide that uh, curated information. Uh, any high level questions? Uh, so does that kind of uh, address what your uh, agenda wise address or what you're looking for? Or is there anything else you're looking for? So someone, uh, if you're not asking a specific question, please stay on mute. Uh, let me mute. So unless you have a question, please mute yourself so we don't distract anybody else. Right. So uh, agenda wise, we'll start briefly with what Maths Academy is. I see one or two of you who whose names I'm familiar, but most of you are probably new to Maths Academy. I'll just briefly talk about one slide about what, what is Maths Academy. Then we'll talk about what are SAT and AC, ACT? What are these AP, AP courses? And then we'll talk about how they are scored, uh, how the test looks like, et cetera, and when and how to prepare, how many times you can write. Uh, so the first of the presentation will be on the SAT, ACT itself mainly, and a little bit about AP courses. And the second half will be about the courses that we offer. What is the coaching methodology? Who are the coaches? What are the store schedules, fees, and any other questions related? Okay. Let me know if you want to, me to handle anything else. Uh, we'll get started. So what is Meris Academy? Uh, we are a virtual educational academy based in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we were founded in the summer of 2011, so we'll be just finishing our 10th anniversary this summer. Uh, and uh, our goal, our mission is to help bring the best out of every child. We believe that every child has infinite potential. And our goal really is to help and equip the parents uh, in bringing the best out of every child in, in their areas of expertise and provide avenues for them to explore. Sometimes you don't know what is what is their gift. So provide different, we have, we do a number of activities starting from elementary school to middle school to high school. We do webinars like this. We also, sometimes webinars for parents, sometimes for the kids. Um, we conduct annual tests. Uh, as we have Mad Genius annual contest. We just completed last weekend uh, to provide a critical thinking uh, base for the kids. We also do Math Core, which is a more standardized prep test for the students before they, go, they have the real test at the school. So every year we do those virtual tests, uh, hundreds, thousands of actually students from across the country take those tests uh, to either prep for the standardized test or to, uh, or to 
now get a more the journey start on critical thinking that is typically for elementary and middle school students and obviously we offer many courses in sat act ap courses any high school courses as well as for elementary and middle school school uh, students we offer for math critical thinking math school math english pla reading and writing public speaking coding uh, spelling science and so on but today i'll focus uh, more on the sat act and ap courses and if you're younger kids by the way i'm doing another webinar at 4:30 so this will finish by around 4:15 4:20 and then at 4:30 doing one uh, for younger kids elementary and middle school kids again for parents but parents of elementary and middle school kids so if you have younger kids or if you have friends who you got younger kids feel you know, can feel free to join or invite them to join same link so with that let's get started uh, i know most of you know what these courses are so i'm not going to spend too much time it's really to provide the context and then answer any questions so sat and act are standardized tests for high school students primarily uh, for the purpose of college admission in the united states now it is also used as an indirect indicator by certain universities like johns hopkins university they have a program called cty duke university have a program called tape it's it's on pause now because of the pandemic and there's northwestern university in chicago has another program called ctd center for talented development so some of these universities have actually middle school students take sat or act as an above grade test to assess well uh, to find the talented students and provide the additional opportunities ap courses are quite different these are college level courses offered for high school students so so in high school so so each of the high schools in the country actually work with the organization called college board which conducts these tests uh, and offer them as part of their school courses so throughout the year the students can take these courses just like there any other high school course but these are a little tougher courses because there is college level courses and by completing them high school students are finishing two things they are completing their enough credits to complete the high school but they are also earning credits for college now in this country if you know college uh, uh in india where i went for undergrad for example where probably many of you did if it is a four years degree you have to attend all four years degrees minimum right you can take more but not less to complete in the us it is nothing to do the number of years so although it's called a four year degree it's all based on the number of credits so most students will finish in four years but you can finish in three and half semesters or three uh, three and half years or seven semesters or even three years or two and half years it all depends on when you complete your credits each uh, college and each uh, particular major has a certain set of credits to complete about 120 to 130 credits and it's all when they complete the credits they're done now completing early uh, is not necessarily only go but you know how expensive is college in this country if you save one year of college you're probably saving anywhere between 40 to 70000 dollars now not thinking about that is in addition to completing degree early and start either starting work or doing an ms or something after that so you save time but you save a lot of money as well so uh, but again there is a balance it doesn't mean that you try to uh, and not all ap courses might earn uh, credits at every single college so you need to do a little bit of research and you can talk offline here questions but i'll pause here because i caught quite a little bit and let you ask any questions related to i'll get into more deep in depth about sat act particular uh, and a little bit about ap courses but i'll let you ask any high level questions at this time you can either enter into the chat or you can just unmute yourself and ask the question is no questions number one so we you would keep hearing about this organization called college board so i thought i will just uh, state what it is it is an independent non profit organization it is based in new, new jersey it is organization that conducts sat 
as well as PSAT and all the AP exams. They are the one who provide AP courses for the colleges, for the high schools to offer uh, to earn college credits. So the ACT is done by a different organization called ACT Inc. ACT organization, actually ACT, uh, uh, it's another non-profit organization started by University of Iowa. Uh, whereas SAT as well as AP courses are offered by College Board. You don't need to know, know a lot about it, but if you want to register for SAT, you would need to go to College Board website. Similarly, for registering AP courses, usually start with the school, but then during the year, the high school will send you an email or the counselor will tell you to go and uh, uh, now pay for the fee for AP exams, etc. Okay. Now I'll go a little bit more in detail about SAT first. Then I go to ACT. Then we'll talk about AP courses. Etc. So let's go a little more. There's a question uh, from Aryan. Does AP courses uh, boost grades in high school? Good question. So. AP courses, because they're considered a, as a college level courses, they're tougher. Uh, most high school, it can vary from certain school districts to school districts, certain private schools might uh, handle differently, but most public schools give an extra, extra credit, extra grade actually. I'll explain. For example, uh, so, okay, first let me take a step back. So, there are two types of grades are GPAs uh, in high schools uh, in the United States. Again, it can vary slightly in certain states and certain school districts, uh, but most public schools follow this are a, on a scale of one to four, right? Uh, are you got a, a, B, C, D, A kind of grading, right? So, if you get 90 to 100, for example, it's called A, uh, 82. 89 is B and so on. So A, a is typically, it gets you four uh, points on a GPA. So it's called GPF four, right? If you get uh, between 80 to 89, typically it is a B, which is uh, gives you three and C gives you two and so on. And uh, GPA is uh, of all the courses that you're taking together is an average of what you got fours in some, threes in some, twos in some, you get an average of all that. For each semester, each year, as well as for the entire high school. Now, there are two types of GPAs. One is called unweighted GPA. The other is called weighted GPA. If you have a high school student right now, you probably already heard about this. If you have a middle school student, you will go through this uh, when the kid goes to high school. So the simple average of all the credit all the grades is called uh, unweighted GPA. Now, the AP courses typically get one extra grade. So if you got a four and you got a, so AP, AP exams are graded on a scale of one to five. Three and above is pass uh, and four and five, five is obviously the highest level uh, and four is still pretty good, three is just a pass. So most high schools, if you get a four out of five, they give you an extra grade. A four out of five in college boards, AP exams, you get, uh, if you get a four out of five in your school grade, because you also will have school grade independently for the AP courses. Because throughout the year, you are also, your child is also taking weekly assignments, uh, you know, formatives, summatives, et cetera. Based on that, they get a, uh, a, B, C, R, D, just like in a, any other course. But a, a usually which ends four, or if it is an AP, if you get a four or five in college board, you will actually get five. You get one extra point. A four becomes five, a three becomes four, a two becomes three and so on. So if you take AP course, and if you score well in that, you do get an extra grade in that subject. Now, if you take an average of all those, including this extra grade, you might see some students say, I got a grade of 4.2 or 4.3. You might wonder if the maximum is only four, how are they getting 4.2 or 4.3? 4 .4 4 that is called the weighted 
GPA. The weighted GPA includes the extra grade that you get from AP courses that you had done well. Does it make sense, Are And I hope it's useful for others as well. Uh, so it does, but it does not necessarily mean that you take every single AP course that is offered because you don't want to kill yourself, right? You There is always a balance. So every, there is no standard advice I can give for students, right? It all depends on individual students. We can, uh, to our students who take our courses, whether it is a, a SAT, ACT courses or AP courses, we give informal counseling. But if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'll, I'll leave my contact here. Then you can reach out to me or one of our, uh, uh, our student success managers or we'll, we'll, we help our students uh, when they have any questions. Uh, any questions related to AP courses and grades? Does it make sense? Back to uh, SAT. So SAT comprises of math and English. Within English, there is a reading part uh, known as a uh, evidence-based reading. There is a writing. The writing is not really like an essay writing. It is more of grammar. So they will give a sentence, for example, and you need to identify what's wrong with that sentence or a paragraph where you may have to rearrange. So it's more of grammar. It's all multiple choice questions. So English is 100% multiple choice questions. So you're not actually writing anything. Math is also mostly multiple choice questions. There are a few or what they call grid in questions. They're like fill in the blank, except that you don't fill the blank. You actually fill a grid. You circle that a numbers, uh, a, four, uh, a four digit grid. Uh, the maximum possible answer is nine 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 nine. 9, 9, 9, 9. So are a fraction or a decimal, and uh, there's a way to fill those grids so kids will learn as part of the course. So don't worry about that. But uh, so everything is machine graded. Everything is entered as bubbles, mostly multiple choice. There are a few math which are not multiple choice, but still they have to fill the grid and they're machine graded. No human being ever sees uh, the papers after the complete students completed. There is no essay anymore. SAT used to have essay, well, they still essay for the May test and the June test. Uh, after June test, the essay is taken out. Uh, so if you're attending a webinar now, I'm assuming that you are probably looking for an August test or later, right? So SAT is conducted multiple times during the year. Uh, and uh, if your child is taking the June test or a May test, they can still optionally take, it's still optional uh, even earlier, but for after June, essay is completely taken out. Any questions? So this is just a recent change. I'm sure you would have, some of you might have heard. Uh, so if there's any, and along with that, College Board also used to kind of offer what is known as uh, subject tests. The subject tests, essay are they used to be called SAT subject tests, but it's a little bit misnomer. It has not, nothing to do with the SAT itself. So the subject tests are offered in uh, all the standard subjects like math, uh, uh, English, literature, uh, history. They, they offered a number of subject tests, which certain colleges required for certain majors. They're not going to be available after June anymore. Uh, so, so it's simplified. No essay, no SAT, and no SAT subject tests. There's only one SAT, which comprises of math and English. Any questions so far? By the way, for those of you who joined late, uh, if you want this uh, presentation, please enter uh, your name, your email name, your child's name and grade into the chat box. I do appreciate if you give your child's grade and name anyway in the chat box, you can enter in the private chat. That way I know uh, which grade so far I've seen uh, 11th graders, 9th grader, 8th grader, there is even a, even a 6th grader. Probably no parent just trying to get advanced information. But uh, feel free to enter your email and details. If you, uh, and uh, for all those who provide that, we'll, we'll email this uh, presentation of the, the webinar is over. Okay, so now let's see how SAT scoring is done. So SAT has a max score of 1600. 
so math has 800 english reading and writing combined is 800 totally 1600 i'm sure you heard about this uh, but let's see how the actually sat test itself looks like so this is the order in which the sections come every time so first is always reading reading has 52 questions and 65 minutes then comes writing and language which is uh, 44 questions and 35 minutes math without calculator 20 questions and 25 minutes math with calculator 38 questions and 55 minutes a total of 154 questions and 3 hours now the 3 hours is excluding the breaks so the proctors usually give breaks between the sections. And it is always on a Saturday morning. So uh, your child will be asked to report at 8 a.m. at the test center. And the test centers are here, typically high schools. It could be your own child's high school or it could be any bit nearby high school. You actually have to register for SA. The high school does not. So you go to college board website. If you just Google for College Board SAT, you will get their website. First time, you would need to uh, create an account for your child. And then uh, they will give what are the upcoming test dates and the test centers, depending on your zip code or the state they give you nearby uh, centers, which are high schools. You can select the center, you can select the date, or you actually select the date first and select the center. They'll ask you a lot of other option questions. You can ignore them if you don't want to answer. A uh, lot of them are just for their own research to see who is taking what kind of courses, what kind of majors they go, et cetera. But those are all optional questions. You register, and then it's always on a Saturday morning, eight o'clock, register at the center. The test usually starts around nine. So the students will be ushered in to respect to rooms. Due to the pandemic, they're maintaining social distance. Um, and no, there's enough distance between the tables in the test and uh, uh, the instructor, the proctor will do all the instructions before the test starts. The test usually starts at nine. It doesn't have to exactly start at nine because each section is timed separately. You cannot use the 30 hours between any of these four sections. First, you have to complete reading within 65 minutes. Then it's done. You can't go back. Next 35 minutes, uh, writing and language, next 25 minutes, math and with breaks between. So they'll be in the test center for probably almost four to five hours. So this is as much a test of endurance as test of intelligence or uh, knowledge or skill. So it's very, very important that the student <coughs> takes good rest, Probably not just the previous night, just previous two nights. Let's make sure they get enough sleep. The last thing that you want is they go tired or sleepy and halfway through they, they feel sleepy, right? So all the prep has to happen in advance. Uh, uh, the night or uh, the previous couple of nights before the test, make sure they get enough rest. Make sure they have a good breakfast on Saturday morning. Uh, give them some snacks and water bottles. They're allowed to carry. They can take them during the break. It's very, very important. So that kind of, that prep is as much important as the preparation for all these math and English and the questions and the test strategies and all that. Okay, any questions? <coughs> if you notice number of questions and time, one question that should come is, if you look at reading, there are 52 questions and 65 minutes. That is a little bit more than a minute per question. Writing and language on the other hand, 44 questions are only 35 minutes, so a little bit less than a minute per question. You might wonder that's the way, that's why that's the case. The reason is reading is much more intensive process. And by the way, reading is an SAT as well as SAT, it is the toughest section. So the, there'll be passes, and these passes are typically like you know, uh, pretty dense passages. The student needs to read the passes, then read the question, Certain questions they should be able to answer as soon as they uh, 
now read the question because they already based the, uh, read the passage. There might be main idea kind of question they should be able to answer. But certain questions require them to go back and uh, read reread certain lines within the question. And so it's it's usually time consuming process. So that's why there's more time. Writing in language on the other hand is usually pretty straightforward. Uh, as I said, it's more grammar based question. And many times if they're good with grammar and if they're prepared, right? Uh, I said is highly coachable program. So with uh, uh, with uh, with good preparation and coaching, they can substantially increase the courses uh, the scores by 200 to 300 points uh, over a few months with, with intensive preparation. So math also requires a little bit more time. Uh, typically, math starts with easy questions first, and the last few questions are always hard. So it is important to pace well. So part of our coaching is not, not just uh, you know, being able to solve the problems, but also how to time yourself, how to make sure that you're able to progress at an even pace and, uh, and have enough time for the last few questions. Any questions? Moving on. Now, one question you might have got is, if you look at the number of questions, in math, 20 plus 38, there are 58 questions. In reading and writing, there are 96 questions. So how are they getting this 800 each? That is done through what is known as a normalization or a curved score. What is the curve? So what college board does is they take all the students that took the test and a particular test date and they normalize it. So this is a relative scoring. The score that a student gets is not just the raw score that they got. It is a normalized score with respect to, uh, or a relative score with respect to every, all other students who took the test. So there'll be a lot of students in the middle, right at the median. The median can vary the actual median score from test to state, but it's usually around 500. The max score is 800. If you got all questions correct, all 58 in math, for example, correct, you get 800. Now, if it is a very tough test, and uh, nobody got 58, and you only got 57, you might still get 800 perfect score, right? So it's all relative score. And the least possible is 800, uh, 200. So it's between 200 to 800, and it is a relative score. Any questions? It's important to know this. Sometimes no, knowing this will reduce the anxiety level and lesser anxiety, better the performance, both for parents as well as, now if you are more calm, you can keep your student calm. Okay, so PSAT. I'm sure a lot of you heard about this PSAT or PSAT, PreSAT, it's called with different names. It's probably one of the most misused or confusing terms. So I thought I will, I will spend a minute explaining what it is and what are the different types of PSATs and how are they structured. So there, uh, the regular PSAT, when somebody says PSAT, they're talking about the one on the left the, in, in, in a low color. So this is typically offered at the high school. Almost every high school in this country <coughs> offers it for 10th and 11th graders. Some may offer it for 9th graders as well. And its structure is exactly same as SAT. It's the same syllabus, same types of questions, uh, same level of difficulty. It is exactly the same, except it's a little bit shorter. So it is uh, instead of 1600, it is only out of 1520. It's 716 math and 716 English. And the number of questions are also slightly lesser. Still no essay. <coughs> so it is, uh, it is a, uh, there's not much difference except that it's shorter. Same level of difficulty. For that reason, for anybody who's taking a PSAT, typically it's offered in high schools in the month of October. Last year, it was a bit, bit uh, uh, awkward because of the pandemic. Some schools did it a little bit later, but otherwise it's always in the month of October. It is conducted at high school itself. Unlike SAT, which you need to call it, go to college board website and register and pay for it, PSAT is offered at high school, by high school. Still conducted and offered by college board, but it is coordinated directly through the high school. And there may be fees sometimes. A school may charge a nominal fee. Some schools may not charge it. The, uh, and uh, 
some schools offer for 9th, 10th, 11th. If it is offered, please do take it. That's a good practice. It's primary purposes practice. Uh, but for 11th graders, there is an additional significance. It's called NMSQT, National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. So based on the PSAT score in the 11th grade, your child might be eligible for certain national scholarships. So that's why it's called NMSQT test as well. There's the second kind of PSAT called PSAT 8-9. This is originally meant for 8th, 9th grade students. And because of that reason, it is a little bit easier than uh, the SAT and other PSAT. It, as you can see, it's even shorter. It's only 720 plus 724 to 1440. But there's not only lesser questions and short time, but it is also a little bit easier. So some of the more difficult questions are taken out. So for example, in math, uh, some of the more advanced algebra two question topics will be taken out. Uh, not all schools offer it. Some high schools may offer it for ninth graders. Some high schools actually offer even ninth graders regular PSAT itself. Some middle schools may offer for eighth grade. It's not as popular as the other PSAT and SAT, but if it is offered, you can take it. Um, it is also used by, by talent identification programs such as Johns Hopkins CT for uh, even English for fifth or sixth grade students actually for uh, as a NEBO grade test. So seventh and eighth grade students actually take SAT itself. They want to go for Johns Hopkins CTY or other talent identification programs. But fifth and sixth graders actually take PSAT 8-9. But otherwise you may not hear about as much about PSAT 8-9. Usually when somebody is talking about just PSAT, it is the first one in the yellow, which is offered at high schools. Any questions on PSAT? We'll also briefly show how the scoring looks like, but not spend too much time. As I said, it's pretty much similar to SATs, the same subject, uh, same subjects in the same order, reading, writing language, math, and the math without calculator, math with calculator. Just a few questions and less of time. Otherwise, it's pretty much. But PSAT, the regular PSAT is actually uh, the same level of difficulty, pretty much same as SAT. So from a preparation perspective, what we do is at Maths Academy, for anybody who's preparing for PSAT, regular PSAT in October, RSAT, it is the same course that we offer because there is really no difference. Now, if a fifth or a sixth grader wants to take PSAT 8-9, or sometimes a seventh or eighth grader, not, they're not going for duke tape, but they just want for practice purpose, they can take PSAT 8-9 as well. So we do offer PSAT 8-9 as a separate course, but we don't offer the regular PSAT as a separate course because that is same as really a SAT. Right? So now I'll jump to ACT before that. Any questions on SAT? All right, let's go to ACT. So ACT is another standardized test uh, offered by an organization called ACT Organization. It is uh, started by uh, University of Iowa. So what is the difference? I'm sure all of, many of you have heard about SAT and ACT both and there could be questions. So every college, I'll talk about test talks now as a, as a uh, that came out of pandemic. That is another source of uh, uh, questions and doubts. But uh, the, all colleges that do take SAT and ACT accept both. Traditionally or historically, SAT is much older than ACT. SAT is almost 100 years old and uh, uh, it is started by college board and it is widely accepted by all universities. ACT came much later uh, and when it came, uh, it became more popular in the Midwest. So if you live in Midwest, one of the Midwest states, for example, you more more likely to have heard about ACT than SAT. And because your child's friends might be taking ACT, they might say, oh, I want to take ACT and that is perfectly all right. So the both are accepted by all colleges today. When they started originally, SAT was more accepted by, uh, are more popular in the East Coast and West Coast, whereas ACT in the Midwest, but now they're offered, uh, accepted by all colleges. Still, you would pro if you live on East Coast and West Coast, you're more, li more likely to that your child 
would have heard about SAT. And if you're in the Midwest, you would have more likely to have heard ACT, but both are equally acceptable. They have certain difference in the test structure I'm going to talk about. And uh, also talk, we'll talk about how many times to take, etc. It's also okay to take both. Many students actually do take both and some students do well in SAT, some do well in ACT. I'll talk about the differences a little bit more once I complete talking about ACT. Now, ACT also has four sections, math, science, reading, and English. As you can see, science is an additional subject area. So math, there is only one section. There are no two sections, but math one section, science one section, reading one section, and English the section. And ACT scores each of these on a scale of 36, not on 800. So each subject is scored on 36. And the max score is the average of the four. It is not the sum. It's not like 800 plus 800 equal to 1600. It is 36, 36, 36, 36, their average. For example, let's say your student got 35 in math, uh, 32 in science, a 31 in reading, and a 34 in English. By the way, the English in ACT is equal to the writing and language in, AC, in SAT. It's more like the grammar. So if you take, uh, then they will take average of those four. 35, 34, 31, 32, they take average, let's say it is 33, that's your child score. Or they round it up or down uh, to the nearest four number. Okay, how does ACT look like? It is similar in the sense it has four sections, uh, English, but it, is in, it comes in a different order, but always in the same order. English first, math second, reading third, and science, science last. English has 75 questions and 45 minutes, math 60 questions and 60 minutes, reading 40 questions and 35 minutes, and science 40 questions and 35 minutes, total of 215 questions and three hours and five minutes. So about the same time, with the break, it'll be a little bit longer, with, with breaks between the sections. Uh, so one thing you may notice if you observe carefully is the time per question. If you look at reading, for example, 35 minutes and 40 questions. That's a little bit less than a minute per question, even reading and science. Math is one minute per question. In SAT, if you remember, reading has, you got a little bit more than one minute per question. And math also actually more than one minute per question. English, they both are a little bit less than one minute per question, but ACT is even lesser, right? So that is one big difference between SAT and ACT. ACT is generally more time constrained. So if your child is, for example, very good with time management, okay, always finishes on time, ACT may be better than SAT because it's all relative scoring. So if your child tends to do better uh, in a more time constrained environment, ACT may be better. On the other hand, if your, uh, your student tends to struggle with the time a little bit, SAT may be better. Okay, that is one difference. The other difference is SAT is considered as a little bit more critical thinking was SAT more uh, school type questions. So, but again, every student does it differently. So now I'll pause. Uh, uh, there's one question about what is super score. Uh, it came as a private question. So all of you may not have seen, I, I will address that. So uh, before uh, talking about super score, uh, a relevant question uh, is how many times a student can take SAT or ACT? And when, they sh when should they take? And how would the colleges look at the score? And then what is super score? Okay, so technically, there is no limit on the number of times a student can take either SAT or ACT. You can take as many as, times as you wish. However, I don't recommend taking too many times. I think two to three times is, is, is very normal. Two is actually very, very normal unless you, know, you take one time and you got the score that you want, you never need to take again. You can take any time during the high school, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grades, you can take any time. Uh, ideally, you should finish by 11th grade. Last attempt, you should finish by 11th grade. Uh, Max, I would recommend three times. There are students who take more than that, but I recommend two to three times. 
many students take a uh, first time after the at the end of the ninth grade during the summer uh, after the ninth grade summer before the 10th grade they take the first attempt uh, because you now they got time during the summer prepare for that and then uh, usually there's a test on august this this year for example there's one on august uh, 28th that's an ideal test for any of the scholars because you get the whole summer to prepare for it. and uh, you, uh, some schools in the north schools may not open until september so you have the whole uh, august as well but even if you are in the south and if the schools open in august they still a slightly light load is light right so you get the whole summer and you can take it in august that's a perfect way to prepare during the summer and take it same for 10th graders uh, the uh, so if you take in, the advantage with this approach is that for rising 10th graders and rising 11th graders that is current 9th and 10th graders they can take sat in august and then in october they will have psat at high school so they are still fresh they just prepared intensively they took the sat and they may not have taken sat but they may prepare but they may want to take it later but still a good time to prepare uh, and using that preparation right they might take one or two additional practice tests in september and then take uh, psat in october it's a perfect timing a lot of students do that uh, but you do want to complete your last attempt by end of 11th grade because the 12th grade the senior high, high school senior uh, uh, fall is when the students will apply for colleges and uh, the regular admissions are typically around december cut off but uh, the early decision and early action and if you haven't heard about that i'm sure most of you heard about it if you haven't heard about the students can actually apply uh, early to get early admission and uh, so that is usually in october november so and you have to there's a lot of time that needs to be spent in uh, with the college application assess assess for the college application etc so i highly recommend completing it, the last round by end of 11th grade but you can start taking as soon as 9th grade you know, any attempt that are taken before high school that is in 8th or 7th grade for talent identification programs i talked about they do not count so you don't need to worry about the number of attempts or the scores that you get when you take in 7th or 8th grade that don't count it up they get wiped out okay now let's come to what is super score a super score certain colleges are allow super score in math, let's say in sat in math you got a higher score in one test but you got a higher score in english in a second test but you got lower than the first one in math in the second test so you take the college take the higher of these two so you can that's why it's called super score right same in act if you got uh, english higher in one but math higher in another one science higher in another one they take a higher of each of them and add or take in, in case of act they take average and colleges take the higher of all of them so that is advantage yes but only certain colleges take not every college uh, uh, allows super score but if they do allow uh, you know they will take the higher of each of the subjects from different batch but even if they don't take super score every college takes higher of the total score so if you take multiple attempts so you got more in the first test than second second test which is unlikely usually the students improve a little bit in the later test but even if you got higher score in first test that's fine right uh, <coughs> they take the higher of the scores now between sat and act uh, so one based on the time constraint how you manage in the time you can decide which one to take but if you're starting early like if you're a ninth if you're ninth or 10th grader now actually you can take one of each not at the same time but probably at least with a, with a couple of months 3 4 months gap uh, take sat first or act later or the other way and then you when you take one of each you will know which one you score better now if you want to repeat uh, take a second or third test only take them in one of them right if you take sat and act and you realize that you scoring better in sat compared to act 
If you take a second test or even a third test, take only SAT, right? Don't take both again. Because after take, take one of each, you, you'd already know which one better suits you. <coughs> Does that make sense? Any questions? So then, uh, uh, is your question super score un answered? Okay, moving on. So who is this SA candidate? I think we already talked about this, but briefly. Uh, so it's primarily meant for college admission, as I mentioned, uh, but um, it is also used uh, for many scholarships use SAT. So the scholarships uh, in the United States, right, is a very interesting area. Uh, a lot of scholarships are what are known as need-based scholarships. Okay, meaning it is based on the income, parents' income. The parents' income is above certain level. The uh, you may not get as many of the scholarships, but there are also a lot of other scholarships uh, which are known as uh, need-blind scholarships need blind scholarships do not look at the income. So they, they are typically the merit scholarships. The NMSQ is one of them, which is based on PSAT. But there are many other scholarships which are uh, also need blind. And the more you research, if you just Google, you'll find a lot of them. And um, the more you research, the more time you spend because some of them required the student to write a personal essay about uh, a certain topic, etc. It's worth spending the time, the more you apply, the more likely you are, you are to get scholarships. And these are typically cumulative scholarships. So you can take more than one scholarship. And the third use we talked about is for a talent identification program, such as John Hopkins, UI, where seventh or eighth graders take SAT and fifth or sixth graders take SAT. Right, any questions? Right. So another thing, uh, so this, some of the colleges during the pandemic, because last year, 2020, uh, SAT and ACT, many tests were canceled. This year they're all restored, but last year they were canceled. And because of that, uh, some colleges made uh, test optional. So what does test optional mean? Test optional means that even if you, you don't have to, actually don't have to take SAT or ACT and submit this course. But in the process, many colleges actually create confusion. This is mostly done by University of California system, but there are a few other universities across the country as well. Uh, now, some students still, some universities still require it. It means that, you know, still have to take it. Uh, but also those who made it optional, the challenge is, what does optional mean? So college admission in this country, as I said, is subject to unlike in India, for example, if you want to go for a particular, let's say engineering or medicine or what, whatever you want to go, you write a particular entrance exam for that. And based on the entrance uh, a score, you either get it or you don't get it, right? Or you, based on the score, you get different colleges. But in the United States, it is not based on a simple score. The number of criteria, college, whole college admission is a different animal, uh, we do offer that as a separate, uh, we do some uh, webinars on that, we offer help with the uh, college selection, essay, uh, admission essay, uh, help, et cetera. But that is a whole different animal. There are several criteria, SAT or ACT is one of them. Uh, criteria, high school grades are extremely important. High school grades and uh, the rigor of the course. That is where AP courses come in, right? So if you take more, AP courses, it's considered a more rigorous course selection. And so higher GPA, but also based on a higher rigor. That is the second criteria. And then uh, every student has to write a personal essay, at least personal essay, one essay. Some colleges require more than one essay. Uh, they give the topics and the uh, extracurricular activities, leadership. So all under teacher recommendations, all of them come towards the admission process. So which means that these decisions are taken by human beings. Every university has 
admission officers. They go through all the applications and the transcripts and uh, uh, activities, leadership activities that they've done, the personal essays, the SAT, SAT scores, and based on that, they make a decision. Now, if there are two students who got everything else same, but one student did not take SAT or ACT, another student took it and got a high score. Uh, what would the admission officer do? Right, it is ultimately admission officer's decision whether to take it or not, whether to take uh, admit uh, accept a particular student or not. So it may still weigh. So uh, and it can vary from college to college because it's subjective, right? So for that reason, it is still recommended to take SAT or ACT uh, and uh, get a good score. Uh, so you, because you don't want that to become a, a, a weight. Uh, now, if your student is still in ninth or 10th grade, by the time they go for college, they probably will definitely require this year uh, is optional. In future, we don't know yet how it goes, uh, whether they will keep it optional or they'll, they're more likely bring it back. Except University of California system is one uh, which made a lot of noise that they will create their own test. But now they're realizing how hard it is to conduct the test. Uh, so it's a lot of you know, political stuff goes on. <laughs> the college admission as well, but uh, uh, but except University of California, most universities are uh, likely to come back to make it a requirement. And also many scholarships are based on, uh, on the SAT and ACT scores. So uh, that's really about the courses. At this point, I will uh, switch to our courses. Any questions on SAT, ACT or AP courses? I'll talk a little bit more about AP. Uh, but any co any questions? Is everybody clear about the structure of SAT, ACT? Uh, what subjects are there? How are they scored? How many times you can take? When to take? When to prepare? Things like that. Yes, it is. Yes. So uh, at this point, I'll switch over to what are the courses that we offer. So obviously, we offer uh, uh, our program name for uh, SAT, ACT, and PSAT is perfect score. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that every student will get perfect score or not even that every student, it is a, a right goal, right? It depends on the student. Um, it is really an ideal. It's uh, uh, on what is our, our goal to help students, but it's not necessarily a good goal for every student. Okay? It's just a brand name. Um, a perfection in in test preparation really. We also offer AP courses. So let me talk a little bit about AP courses now. So the AP courses, uh, uh, as I said, right, they're uh, taken during the high school and they, they have dual purpose. Based on the score, the student is completing the high school requirements, but also earning credits for college. But, but it's also used as an indirect indicator for rigor. So the AP courses are offered in a number of different subject areas. If you go to call, if you search for college board AP, you will get the within math, they have math, uh, calculus, AB and BC, statistics. In sciences, there is AP biology, chemistry, physics. Physics actually multiple AP courses, physics one, physics two and physics C. Uh, similarly, there's a AP government, AP uh, US history, world history, European history, AP macro, Macroeconomics, Macroeconomics, AP Arts, uh, and then so basically AP subjects are, uh, AP is offered in a number of different subject areas. Depending on the student interest, they can take uh, whichever they want, but every high school actually offers only certain number of them. Every high school don't offer all the AP subjects that are offered by college board. So typically you take what your college, your high school offers, and again, the first year, ninth grade, some high schools may offer just one AP or no AP at all. 10th and 11th, 10th grade and all worth, they offer more. So generally the way colleges look for, uh, when they look at rigor, they look at all the AP courses that are offered at high school, your high school, which ones you have taken, how many you have taken. If your high school doesn't offer 
and you did not take that it is not considered as a negative. So colleges actually keep track of all high schools in the country. The different admission offers looking at different states and different high schools, and they know which, which high school offers how many. And based on that, they, uh, uh, so if it is not offered, it's okay, don't worry. So you, because if you're, all, if you're in a very competitive high school, it's more likely that more AP courses are offered. But if you are in a less competitive high school, uh, less might be offered. So they always compare within the school. Uh, but again, it also depends on the student. While you want to take as many as you want, don't kill yourself. You need to know, you need to personalize based on what you can take and what you can handle. Uh, another question, what does one enroll in every program or is AP needed to take? Good question. So some high schools offer what is known as IB, International Baccalaureate Program. And if it is offered at your high school, you could take it. That's for 11th and 10th, uh, uh, 10th and, sorry, 11th and 12th graders can take IB program in which more advanced courses are offered as part of the high school curriculum itself, that IB curriculum itself, in which case you do not need to take AP because IB is considered equivalent to AP. Now, AIB is more popular you know, outside the United States compared to the United States. So if any student want to go for, like, let's say, undergrad in, in Oxford or Cambridge in London, in UK or some other country, IB is much more useful. But if your high school does offer IB, you can take it. You can decide which one to take. Uh, both will be probably an overkill because both of them are pretty, uh, pretty intensive. But if you take IB, you don't need to take AP. But again, talk to your school counselor. Right, every school has uh, public schools have less number of counselors, but you can email their counselor and take an appointment. Nowadays, of course, uh, you just do it a phone call or a Zoom call, but you can email and they will advise uh, for your specific school what is the situation. So AP courses uh, are offered throughout the school because these are college level courses, they're usually much tougher. So many students during the summer before uh, the next year, right? They want to get a head start, especially some courses are considered more difficult than others, like AP calculus or AP chemistry are pretty hard, or AP bio. Uh, so we do offer those courses as well during the summer. Uh, most AP courses during the academic year, students want to take one-on-one. -on -one. So all the courses that I listed here, they're actually small group courses, five to eight students, because we actually SAT, we only keep five to seven. SAT, SAT, uh, we keep a little bit fewer, but any other course also we keep max five to eight students to keep uh, uh, good, allow for interaction, allow for the student and teachers to know each other. And... Uh, Although these are group classes, the teacher still keeps track of the students and uh, uh, provides advice, etc. Uh, but we also offer, if you look at the last line, one-on-one -on -one coach, we also pro or provide private coaching in any of these subjects. Uh, and AP courses during the academic year, many students take one-on-one -on -one because this, every school follows slightly different. Uh, it is hard to combine students from different schools because they might be following a different order, different sequence, and the students want help in the school itself. Unlike other courses that we offer, right? For younger students, math genius is a critical thinking math. It is really to keep the students advanced. The ELA, uh, public speaking, spelling, science, coding, these are all help students stay sharp and stay do well, right? Uh, so they don't necessarily need to impact the school. So, uh, the group classes work perfectly. SAT is also fine because SAT is not taught at the school. But AP courses typically because they're taught at the school and they're challenging, those which are taken during the school year, the students want one-on-one -on -one so that we can help with exactly what they need at school. But, sorry, uh, but during the summer, um, because there is no school, right? Group classes are also okay. If there we have two or three students, we can do a private, uh, like a semi-private class or a, a small group class. Obviously the fee for small group classes are a little bit less than one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, 
so in the summer, whenever there are multiple students, we try to offer uh, small group courses for AP courses. Uh, but if there's no other student, we might do one-on-one -on -one as well. There's a question in the chat. Can kids take AP courses during summer break and get credit? No, the AP exams are always in the month of May. So toward the end of the academic year. But the students can prepare for them to get a head start during the summer. And then they will still take the course toward the year at the school and they take the final exam in May. So they cannot take the test in the summer, but they can prepare during the summer. Does it make sense, Pratham? Okay, I'm not going to drain about other courses because I'm doing another webinar for elementary and middle school students, but high level math genesis, critical thinking math, for your, if your student is in middle school or elementary school and not yet ready for SAT or ACT, the math genius and language genius are perfect platform for students to prep for that in advance. It will keep them ahead of the school grades. It will give, a, both of these will give a great foundation to do well, uh, to do a doodle with SAT, ACT or AP courses when they go to high school. And uh, you can also, in math, especially there are a lot of math competition, this critical thinking math genius will also help prepare for uh, school math. But if you are looking for during the summer for bridge course for next, if your school, you think that my student doesn't, you know, maybe struggling or maybe not, not necessarily struggling, but uh, want to make sure that he's good in school math. And uh, we have bridge courses for every grade of math, first grade to high school we offer a bridge case during the summer so that they get head start for next year. Uh, so first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, after that, you know, pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, geometry we offer, all those bridge courses, math for bridge courses during the summer. ELA, uh, similar to Math Genius, they help with the school math, school English as well, but also stay strong in reading and writing skills are extremely important, not just for the English course itself, but for all other courses, right? Your history, your, uh, your science, or even math requires good writing skills and reading skills. Uh, we also do public speaking. Uh, spelling, spell genius is not for everyone, those who prepare for spell, spelling bees. These are taught by Scripps National Champions, and toppers. Uh, Science Genius is again a very good program, both for ACT or uh, high school AP courses in advance, but uh, uh, middle school, we, we do uh, in the, we have Science Genius level one and two, where we cover earth sciences, physical sciences, life sciences, to stay ahead of the school. For middle school, like you no know, seventh, eighth, ninth eight students, et cetera, we offer biology and the neuroscience classes as well. And coding, of course, many students, want to be entrepreneurs, uh, even while they're in high school, middle school, are, uh, you know, a lot of the future careers are in data science, artificial intelligence fields. So many students uh, nowadays are able to learn coding in middle school or uh, even elementary school. Appropriate to do, uh, Python is very popular, for younger students, Scratch as well. These are all based on math, right? So coding is really applied math. So we teach the math principles, and then we actually engage them by creating live programs on a weekly basis. As I said, one-on-one -on -one coach, we can offer one-on-one -on -one private coaching for any subjects. Uh, you're usually very popular for AP courses, and uh, or if your student requires some, you know, excels better in a smaller environment, one-on-one, -on -one, we can provide that. But most of these are available group courses, including some AP courses during the summer. Okay, any questions? So now I will uh, talk specifically about SAT and ACT coaching. Um, what are we doing? 4.10, okay. I'll probably wrap up in another five to 10 minutes. Uh, so what is our methodology for SAT and ACT? We cover all subject areas and the concepts, not just the test prep, but we actually cover the concepts as well. 
you also go through all the test strategies. For example, when to solve a full problem versus when to just uh, eliminate choices, right? Or when to plug in numbers in case of math and uh, get the answer, get the multiple, in case of multiple choice, because most questions are multiple choice. But we also do the concepts. We don't only do the test strategies. We do cover the concepts and we cover the test strategies. Practice is very important. We do several full practice tests throughout the course. Uh, we also do certain times, just certain sections. We do, do have our own homework sometimes, but we do full tests. All the tests obviously will have to be taken outside of the class because the test is three hours, right? We, we don't want to waste the time during the class. The class time is used for teaching and for reviewing the tests uh, uh, and, uh, and specifics on how the students are doing, but the actual tests are taken, student has to take outside the class. We give you homework after each class. All classes are live, interactive on Zoom. Uh, we encourage students to ask questions. These are not like just like a one-way communication. You no know, teacher keeps going. It's actually in live, interactive classes. We keep the class uh, small, such as uh, small, six to seven max, sometimes lesser, but max six to seven. More than that, we break them into multiple groups. All classes are recorded. So if the, any student misses a class or misses a few minutes of the class, or even if they don't miss, they just want to review it again, the, all the recordings are available. Any questions on the coaching methodology for SAT and ACT? One last uh, time, anybody who joined late, uh, and if you want a copy of the presentation, please do give, provide your email address and your child's name and grade in the in the chat box. Any other questions on the coaching methodology? Now, who are the coaches? So now we have been doing this for 10 years and uh, we tried all kinds of teachers, all kinds of coaches. Personally, I found the best coaches for SAT and ACT test prep, but in general for all subjects, but especially for test prep, one of the best coaches are the ones who themselves took this took those tests during their high school days and topped. We got the perfect score or near perfect scores during those days. And then uh, went on, uh, have been coaching other students over the years. And so they're, they're good at the subject. They themselves got perfect or near perfect scores, but also coaching others can, can connect with the other students and typically doing undergrad at the top universities. Uh, we very rigorous in whom we take. Uh, they're typically under top half to 1% of all their undergrads in the country. So uh, good subject wise, but also self-motivated and have good communication skills uh, with teaching experience. Highly motivated uh, coaches motivate the students. So it's very important that the students themselves, their passion, or the coaches are passionate and, uh, and uh, motivated. And most important, connect with the students. I find that usually the high school and middle school students connect far better with you know, others, only a few years older than them compared to adults who they speak the same Gen Z language and they connect well with each other. But uh, I personally uh, monitor all classes. I uh, mentor all our coaches to make sure we maintain the highest level of standards and make sure uh, you know, we help the student get the best out of uh, the courses and in the test. I've been talking a lot, so any questions? If you, are mid, if you are middle elementary school students, I'm doing another webinar in another 10 minutes, at 50, uh, another 15 minutes at 4.30. Uh, we'll talk about all other courses other than SAT and ACT and AP courses for younger students. Feel free to join, same link. But uh, somebody had a question, heard something. Hmm? No. But in general for younger students, math, English and science, those are the foundations. So make sure they stay well ahead uh, in these and uh, their SAT and ACT, uh, and AP courses will be cakewalk when they go to high school 
math genius language genius and science genius and ps889 are a great foundation for any students if you have any questions specific questions uh, i'm i'm I'll leave my contact numbers you obviously i think have or general contacts but uh, you probably all know my email address but i'll also leave my phone number the email just in case you don't know ram at mathsacademy.com you can either reach me or you can reach our student success manager shri devi at mathsacademy.com you probably got her mail uh, my phone number is Two zero nine eight six two eight zero eight seven. Feel free to either email or text. Text probably is the best for me. So you can just text me on that number. If you have any further follow up questions, are you looking for a specific course? So all our summer courses are starting from May first week, uh, but there are obviously limited seats and uh, we have limited capacity. So if you are if you want to register, register uh, immediately. or you can just uh, email or text us we will help you so schedules and fees uh for intensive sat and act coaching uh typically these are three months courses 12 weeks twice a week two hours per session that's a total of 48 hours 24 classes of two hours each 48 hours the days could vary slightly we will have multiple batches uh but i think we'll have two or three batches uh, we try to club students of similar uh, grades and uh, not always the grades similar of similar skills sometimes you know there's a younger student who's probably doing very well they might do better with the slightly older students as well but similar skill sets into similar groups we generally try to keep one week end and one week day but being in the summer we might do both week days as well but weekday evening because the in may there will be still school right the weekday classes will still be in the evenings weekend may be either evening or daytime but weekday ones will keep in the evenings from june july we might shift some of them to during the daytime right whenever all schools are over uh, we might move some of them to the weekdays we work with the parents uh, we create uh, for all classes we create whatsapp group for each class with the teacher our uh, admin staff and the parents together create a whatsapp group to coordinate uh, whatsapp or one of other uh, groups so that you now you can communicate uh, and coordinate we also do several full tests uh, out all the tests are taken outside the class uh, the fee is uh, $1080 for the full course material is free included in that if we uh, uh, so that comes to Thousand eighty by forty eight is twenty two point five dollars per hour, and material is included in that. That's not even uh, included in the, because the cost so it's free. Uh, and uh, uh, usually the SAT or ACT group classes are like you no know, forty fifty dollars an hour. One on one, usually in the market, if you go to big brand uh, coaching centers, will be like you no know, sixty to hundred dollars uh, per hour. We deliberately keep. Or a fee low to uh, to make it available for more students, make it accessible for the parents, and uh, uh, we are really here to make a difference to the students and to help bring the best out of them. So you can go to uh, our website. You will find uh, uh, information related to our SAT ACT courses as well as late. even if you go to summer courses you will find sat ACT information as well or ap courses or any other subject that you want um, there are couple of, in fact let me open and show how uh, so if you go to mathsacademy.com a couple of links that will help you find more information you still see my Yeah, we can. Yeah, the first link is our 10th anniversary uh, summer special summer courses. If you go here, you will find a lot of information related to uh, the courses that we offer uh, and the number of hours, the fee. All this information is there. The specific schedules, like you know which days and what time, 
uh, we'll publish in the same website uh, soon. Uh, the same, this is the webinar link. If any of your friends or family want to see the link is here, the times at the same time every week. I'm doing this for the rest of this April as well. Uh, you'll find more asset and ACT specific information here, but you can just, but you can just go to the regular, uh, this webinar is actually older information. But, uh, you can just go to the summer courses and register for SAT as well there. Or you can just mail her. Any last question before we close? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, I just want to know, like, uh, 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 can you talk about your instructors? Like, who will be your staff? Yeah, yeah. I briefly talked about... Hello? Ram, you are on mute. We can't hear you. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? I did not realize yeah, I got yeah, muted. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sorry about that. So your question about the coaches, say, I, I talked a little briefly about it, so let me. So uh, as I said, right, uh, our coaches, uh, uh, what we found the best coaches are typically those, those who themselves went to high school here and got a perfect or near, near perfect scores. They typically do undergrad at prestigious universities. Uh, they're typically the top half to 1% of the undergrads in the country <coughs> from prestigious universities with coaching experience themselves. They have been teaching other students over the years and uh, those who have got good communication skills, not just good subject, obviously, uh, they need to know the subject, but they also have good communication skills and connect with the students. So uh, those are our uh, coaches. I personally work with all the coaches, uh, uh, mentor them and make sure that they're uh, maintain the high levels of standards and make a difference. Uh, but uh, that's cool. But how do you know that they're committed? Because last time also I did for math class that the instructor had so many uh, commitments of our own. Uh, I'm really interested in SAT, ACT, this thing, but I'm worried it'll go to the same route where they'll never give feedback or like they never correct the homeworks. Because no, we, yeah, yeah. So, so we work, uh, uh, so for SAT and ACT particularly, we, we, we are very selective in taking uh, the coaches. They actually start with the diagnostic test after the first class, and they actually share the uh, scores and, uh, and feedback based on that. And, and through the uh, course, we do several full tests and, uh, and send individual mails to the parents. Uh, but we also encourage the parents to, uh, after the uh, certain classes, you can uh, uh, ask the coach to stay back for a few minutes and uh, talk in person as well. Okay, sounds yeah. good. And, uh, and uh, our student success manager, Sri Devi, will be in touch with all the parents. You can, if you have any feedback, you can reach her and then she will connect with the teacher to make sure it's uh, fully connected. Cool, thanks. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name, ma'am. Uh, uh, my name is Siri, uh, Sirisha. Okay, ma'am. Thank All you. Right. Any other questions from anyone before we close? All right. It's great talking to each of you. And yeah, feel free to, uh, you can either register directly if you're looking for, if, you're, uh, if you know which class to register, or if you have any questions, you can reach Sridevi Army on email or phone number. Okay, I have last question. So how many tests you like among, uh, uh, like, you, is there any uh, fixed schedule? Do you let them try ACT as well as SATs? How, how the... No, SAT and ACT are two different courses, ma'am, because okay. uh, they're, they're two different tests, right? We cannot combine the two. Even the subject is different sciences there in ACT. But oh. within SAT or SAT, we give six to eight tests. It's really the amount of... Uh, is the, really the constraint on how many test students can take, right? 
uh, so but we can but we, typically we give once every week other week so the 12 week program uh, six but if the students can take we can give up to 10 10 or more tests but okay, we give minimum good. minimum six tests okay and after that if they want to practice we can uh, after the course is over if they're taking a test a little bit later and if they want a, additional tests we can provide those as well cool right there are no other questions uh, great session and a uh, lot of information thank you ram you uh, i said it's yeah it's a great session yeah thank you good to hear that Thanks, all the best to your children bye nice thanks